Hello, this is Eric again here on our, our Revolutions Per Minute on DZRJ Radio, the voice of the Philippines. It's Saturday afternoon, the sun is shining, and we're here in the RJ Studios here in Makati talking with you today about ways to improve your life. My name is Eric Kane with Marlon Craig who is off today, but I am joined here with Lino Marshall. Yes, yes. Lino Marshall. Yes. And uh, uh, we're going, we're, we're just two guys just sitting here talking about things that usually women talk about. But it's okay, it's okay. We're, um, but we have an interesting show today. I had a, a long conversation with um, um, Marlon Craig yesterday. I don't know how true that statement is. It was actually really quick. And we, we talked about um, um, goals in a relationship, about uh, yes. things that you can do in life uh, to, help your, to help your relationship and, and think about things that are coming in the future and how that relationship is going to prosper Yeah, and what you can do to make it prosper. Now, uh, I'm glad we have you here today, Lena. You've been on the show quite a few times. Yes. yes. Um, and we, we, you know, we love your take on things. Um, oh, you. You, you might be a little bit more... Um, what's the word? Normal compared to me and Marlon <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the and the relationship that we've been through. So maybe a little bit. But um, I mean, just go ahead and, and diving right into the subject. I mean, as far as is you know sitting down, like your for instance, like this show is really about for people who yes, are yes. in a relationship, um, not as opposed to you know people that are trying to find somebody or, or whatever. And this is not only people that are in a relationship, also possibly engaged yes. and possibly already married, yes. um, and uh, uh, you know the, the the ups and downs and things of, of a relationship, and trying to find what the next step is in the evolution of being together. Yes. So, um, and I know you know uh, um, uh, you're currently actually in a relationship. In a relationship. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you're, you're not married. You've never been married. <laughs> you're actually quite no, young. No, I'm not. You're not like Marlon and me that have been around the block like 10 times. <laughs> so, um, but uh, um, right now, I mean, it, it, right. as far as like, you know, in your life, in your perspective, um, having a goal, like uh, in, in just the general, most general generic terms of having goals in a relationship, what are the, the big, like the big three, the big goals in, in, uh, in putting together? Um, a list of things to help your relationship. So actually, if you're going to um, to jump jump in into getting married as a man, you know, it's like you know, marriage is like a business. It's like a goal. When when you you have when you want to go to have a business, you have to plan. So the the first thing that you need to do is to analyze your current life status and ask yourself three questions: where you are right now, financially, emotionally. And spiritually so that's the three thing that uh, you need to analyze for yourself because you know you're going to be come one with another woman you know? it's not so easy if you're a single man if you're a bachelor like me it's a huge leap you know yeah I mean uh, uh, you know like looking at number one uh, unless you're marrying a yeah. a woman who is from a very rich family, or a doctor, or something like that, uh, you, you need to be able to provide yes. for not only her, but the possibility of there being more people in yes. your relationship, yes. um, maybe later after you get married. So, um, I mean, that's one thing to definitely plan for. If you now, of course, in the beginning of the relationship, you don't think about it too much. You got to think about, you know, how much money do I need in order to, you know, take it for a nice night out, not. You know, maybe not the jolly thing, but maybe Chow King, maybe moving up a step, I don't know. Um, but, you know, how much money am I going to need to be able to get through this yes. night uh, versus, you know, after a, quite a while where you're thinking, hey, you know what, I might spend the rest of my life with this woman. How am I going to pay for this? Yes. And, you know, she, and, I, and, I, and I'm saying, you know, always, and I, you know, if you, if you find a girl who's like, you know, always taking the money out of your wallet and is always asking, what are you going to buy me? What are you going to buy me? You know, this might, there's the, there are other women out there that yes. are not like that, that, um, um, you know, you know, will support you, uh, you know, um, um, mentally, uh, even though they can't maybe, um, support you financially. And that is going to be your responsibility as the man yes. in the relationship. 
I mean that you know in modern times that switches back and forth quite a bit. But in general, in, in the uh, in the scheme of things, um, especially in the, in the in the in the Philippines, yes. if you're going to get married, you need to be able to provide. Provide. You know, because I saw this problem in a lot of male Filipinos out there. You know, especially in the in the in the areas where there's no prosperity. You know, like like in Manila City. You know, there are there are men like that that when they saw this girl, they wanted to marry right away and without planning, without financially planning, and then they will tell themselves this this famous words, bahala na bukas. It's like, you know, God will provide. You know, it's just like that. You know, they don't they they don't take it full responsibility. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, and in general, in life, you know, God will provide you yeah. health and prosperity, but He's not going to give you cash. Yeah, um, absolutely you know, it's, right. It's up to you to get the cash. Yes. Um, you know, He'll give you life, but then it's what you do with it yes. uh, that really matters. And so, um, I mean, that's just a very, that's a very fair point. Yes. Um, you uh, meet a woman and you're in love, and I'm going to marry this woman, and then you jump right into marriage, and you haven't thought about. You know yeah. what comes next. It will be a disaster. Yeah, um, you really, you know, sometimes in these things, you know, planning really helps. Now, yeah. um, the second thing that you were talking about was emotional. the emotional side yes. of, of the relationship. And here again, you know, at the beginning of a relationship, you know, you're you're in love every time you see them, you're excited, yes. and it's great and it's wonderful, and you have a physical relationship, and you're going out and doing these things. <laughs> but when you start living with somebody, yes. it, it's different. Yes, it's it's different, and you have to be prepared for the emotional side of what goes on. And what will you discover in that person? Yeah, because you, you came from a different background, you know. And when you become one, uh, living together day by day, you will discover some stuff that maybe you like, you love, or you don't love, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, I know what that means. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. No matter what person you live with, it is never going to be perfect. Yes. And it may be perfect, absolutely wonderful, leading up to the day where you move in together. Yes. And then you move in, and she finds out what your habits are, <laughs> and you find out what her habits are. Um, and then you find out what you, the man, can and can't do anymore. Yes. And you have to be prepared to be able to yes. deal with not only the good times, yes. But the bad times. So yeah. That comes the emotion. You, you need to be prepared emotionally because um, being in a relationship of marriage is like everyday service, giving love, giving service to the woman. It's a it's a huge decision you you, you should make. You know, it's not it's not bahala. It's not like that. Yeah, I mean, you're constantly in a, in a relationship. You know, you're constantly learning about each other. It's yeah. full of surprises. Yes. Every day is something new. But once you start living together, those surprises <laughs> become less and less. I mean, you know, the good surprises now. Now it's new surprises. You know, all of a sudden, uh, you know, you've been in a relationship for a year, and then you find out about George, the ex-boyfriend from six years ago, who moved back into town. Yeah. And now that, like, you know, it's a new surprise that you have to be ready for. And that's another. You know, that's an interesting. You know point there is, is when you're in uh, a relationship and you're you know making your emotional goals yes. and how you're going to support each other um, unless you're you know 18 and 19 years old if you're getting together and you're 25 or 26 you have a past yes and being able to talk about that past openly and freely I think is very important yes um, it's very important. being scared to bring up your exes um, and things, it's one of those um, um, uh, things that can really mess up a relationship because you then you're in the relationship for two or three years, and then all of a sudden you find out all this new stuff that you didn't know about. Or um, big surprises. Um, so one of the one of the goals I think, in the, as far as the emotional goals, is in you know as you're realizing that this may be the person you want to spend your life with, is to be able to say to that person, okay, you can open up, you can tell me anything or like give, give yourself like okay to, okay for one hour you can tell me anything you want and I promise I won't get mad and I won't bring it up you know later you know, it's um, a good rule. <laughs> you know to see, just to see if you can do it just to get all that stuff out um, so emotionally you're ready to yes. move forward so that's a good point you know because uh, you should remove all the secrets from your past experiences whether it's bad experiences good experiences you should tell it to your partner so 
I don't know about your experience, but whatever it is, if it, you are a gay or so, you should tell it to your partner, you know, right away, because in the middle of marriage, it would be disaster, you know. Yeah, because, you know, if you, if, you know, if you killed your last girlfriend, you yeah. can tell me, you can tell me, it's okay, we'll work it out. There's no <laughs> trust issue yeah. in that part, you know. Yeah, I mean, um, um, you know, and I think that's, that's, that's something that, uh, um, all relationships go through. Yes. Everybody goes through this problem of, you know, should I tell her what I did, you know, a couple of years ago? And, you know, uh, um, I think that's the best, most successful relationships are those relationships in which you can yes. be open and not worried. Yes. Um, be great because if you really love that person, you will tell it as you enemy, whatever it is. You should be open. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, you know, before in my past experiences, I've tried to be mm -hmm. open and I say, you know, hey, you know, this happened, I'm just letting you know, okay, that's fine, sure, you can tell me whatever. And I know in the back of my mind that six months from now, this is going to come back to haunt me. This is going in the filing cabinet, <laughs> she's going to pull this back out. So you need to, you know, I think to, to be successful, you need to have an agreement Yes. Um, agreement with the with the person that you know. Okay, let's let's talk about this, and then we're going to talk about it, get it over with, and then we're going to leave it. Yes. Um, and you know, you can't bring it up six months from now when there's an argument and you need yes. something and you don't have it. Then you can, you know. Uh, but um, uh, I think um, um, being you know uh, emotionally on equal terms, uh, I think, is one of the the yes. biggest things because you know being able to have an argument with somebody yes. and not after the argument not think to yourself are we breaking up <laughs> is this the end because we had an argument it, that, I think that is that, that's a big thing to be able to have an argument begin end and done yes. and not afterwards think oh my god that, this is the end we're breaking up now because and, technically you can live with the past you know it's a bad habit to live in the past experiences you can move up you will be stuck if you're living in the past experiences, you know. I mean, you know, I think, I, you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I, you know, I, wish, I, I wish I could do these kind of things <laughs> on, my, on my own. But, uh, um, uh, but yeah, I, you know, it's just, um, uh, and I've said this, you know, so many times on the show in the past about being able to deal with each, with each yeah, other sure. when they have made you so angry that you feel like you know, knocking, the, you know, throwing them out the window, and uh, um, and you know, I, I I'm sure you know the the girlfriends I've had in the past have wanted to throw me out the window on numerous occasions, and you know, and a lot of times when you're in the heat of an argument, you will say and you will do things yes. that you didn't really mean. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with sitting down with your partner and say, you know what, if we ever have an argument Come and down. I say something a little crazy, just take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, because later, you know, and, and sometimes that's the way it is. When you're angry, you need to just do something or say something or throw a dish. And once you're done, then you're calm again. You're yes. calm again. And then you're like, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't really, I didn't really mean all that. Um, and that's a good thing is when an argument ends, end it. Don't yes. drag it out. Yes. Uh, don't expand it. Don't elaborate it. You know, you should, you should handle it together. Yeah. Because if you, you know, if you love each other, you'll love each other before the argument and yes. after the argument. After the argument. Uh, so, but, but if you're going to have an argument, argument that she'll go and throw you out of the window, you better, you better have that argument inside the church. <laughs> yeah. So that you know, you will be... So Make sure good. the doors to the balcony are locked. <laughs> so that's... And don't ever have an argument with a girl in the kitchen. <laughs> I know from experience. Because there's too many things to throw. Yes, there's yes. too many sharp objects in the room. No, I'm just kidding. But anyway, um, uh, but uh, moving on, uh, you also said that you, you, know, you need to be spiritually on the same level. Now, what, what do you mean by that? So, spiritually, uh, it will be the base of your relationship if you want to expand and to last forever, mm -hmm. you know? Because sometimes the problem is, you know, the, the man will go to the church and then your woman will not, will not, will not come to you, will, will not come with you, you know. It's a totally disaster if you don't have the same belief system, you know. When you, it, it will be a cause of many arguments 
and many broken window, windows as well because you know it's the thing to be discussed so uh, it, um, um, you think that um, um, if a Christian marries a Muslim it might be recipe for disaster uh, actually I'm not not really because um, when you you have the emotional state where you, you where you're equal with emotionally and then with this spiritually it, uh, at the back of it is a respect you know but but then spiritually same with uh, beliefs and how you will reach your relationship and your kids as well yeah I mean uh, um, you know here we're getting into a you yeah. know a very interesting subject yeah. here. Um, and I, I you know I, I use the extreme there you know Christian and Muslim <laughs> the extremes mm -hmm. but what happens a lot especially with the the people that I know mm -hmm. is you'll have a, a foreign man will come over and he'll marry a Filipino mm -hmm. and she's Catholic and he's Christian or Jewish or, or something or uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, not so many guys I know are Muslim um, in the United States we don't uh, Muslim is uh, not so much mm -hmm. that but 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 definitely the the Christian Catholic divide now if you ask me what is the difference between Catholics and Christians <laughs> I think that's a very small yes. Yes. small thing However, um, um, you know the the woman, especially when it comes to going to church. Yes. Um, and I believe I believe that um, you find a way. You find a way. I mean, religion is a good thing. Yes. It's something that is happy and good good in our lives. There's you know um, Catholics. They you know, have good things. And they, yes. you know, Christians have, have, have good things. Um, um, so um, find a medium and. If you you know if you really support each other, maybe you'll go to the Catholic Church one yes, Sunday, yes. and you go to the Christian Church another Sunday, um, and it you know it's it's not so bad to get to know her yes. religious friends and, and beliefs, you know, and, and and sit down and, and talk about it, and it's kind of interesting, you know, when you do sit down. I've sat down and talked to many Catholics about this. I'm like, okay, tell me the difference between your religion and my religion. And, you know, nobody really has a good answer for that. Um, and sometimes, you know, maybe there's really not. There's yes. really not. I mean, people are people. Yes. Um, you know, we all believe in, in generally in the same uh, in the same God, the same thing. Yes, yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. So, um, uh, I think that you know, if you really love somebody, you will find a way. Yes. I don't think we should use religion as a reason, but yes. although people do, yes. I know. And, and now, the the issue about being married. Um, make sure you have that worked out yes. before you get married um, and then because at the end of the day um, it's it's not all about religion it's about your relationship yeah your exactly relationship. you don't want to use religion as an excuse for well you know it's because you're this yes. as you know well because you're that you know you don't you don't want to ever use religion as an excuse in an argument yes. or you know but um, you know children is another issue um, and you know, here again, I think this is something that can be worked out. I mean, I could be wrong. You know, do we raise them Catholic or do we raise them Christian? Why don't we just, you know, raise them Christian Catholic? I don't know. You know, they're, but then I believe that you know there there must be a way, and you just have to respect the beliefs of the other person yes. and get that worked out well ahead of time. Yes, I do believe that because that's if that will be uh, necessary for every relationship. You know, having that respect, trust, and then. In terms of religion, you can work it out. You can, you know, maybe you can decide, oh, okay, because I love you, I'm going to be a Christian. I will, you know, I will support you. On terms like that, you know, it's it's really um, respect and love at the end of the day. It's not all about religion. Respect and love it will, uh, will improve your spiritual life. Yeah, I mean, you know, I have another, you know, a, a friend, and, and her husband is a Mormon, and he's a hardcore Mormon. And she's hardcore <laughs> Catholic, and you know they, um, um, you know he's very high up in the church, and she's you know extremely Catholic, and they have figured it out, and they go to each other's wow. things, How they, they go that? to each other's things, and they sit, and I'm sure when she goes to hear the Mormons talk, and she hears about the history of Mormonism, she's like, oh my God, <laughs> these people are crazy. <laughs> And you know, and I'm just saying that because I'm, a, I'm an American, and, and we, you know, we 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 did tend to say that we make fun of each other's religions all the time. But he goes to you know the the, uh, the Catholic Church, yes. and he sits there, and he may be bored out of his mind, <laughs> but he sits there because 
not because he, you know, um, uh, because he loves the woman. Yes. And if you love the woman, and you truly do, you will be bored at many times in your life. <laughs> Same thing if you, you, you know, if you love your kids. You know, you will go and watch, you know, the the school chorus, you know, sixth grade chorus sing for an hour and a half, and you know, in a hot room, you'll do that. Yes. Um, and and the same thing with your with your your person. And you know what? They will appreciate you more for it because um, when you really love that someone, you have to die to yourself the same way that the same way that Jesus died to herself. You know, I'm not going. I'm not going to preach it, but that's the way he's that he he, uh, he died into himself for the church. So if you love that person, you should die into yourself. You should be willing to die. I mean, if I'm going to elaborate it, it's it's like um, when your woman is always on the shopping. Of course, men don't want to go to shopping, but when your woman asks for you. To, Hey, please come with me, please, please. And then that time, you should be willing to die to yourself. Even if you don't want to, to go to the shops for shopping, even, even if it's boring, you know, you will do it because you love that woman. So that's the thing that I'm saying, talking about, you uh, should be willing to die to yourself. Yeah, I mean, and this goes, this is a message for all the women out there. Yes. When you ask him to go shopping with you for a purse, and he goes, he loves you. Because I can tell you right yes. now, he does not want to go. <laughs> yes, because he will, maybe he will pay it. <laughs> he will sit there and he will smile, but he does not want to be there. He loves you. If you're going shopping for a purse, <laughs> shoe shopping, and he's like, try those on, honey. Those look good. And he'll walk around with him. You can tell in the back of his mind, he's like, oh my God, I'm dying here. But... But that means, you know, that means, you know, that's one of those yes. things. That's, not very, that's the reality because it's true. When you really love the woman, even if you're suffering inside the shop, you're suffering with love, with joy. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, 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 you know, I totally am in agreement. Like, for instance, you know, <laughs> she's sitting there watching the basketball game with you. She doesn't want to be sitting there watching the basketball game with you, but she will. But she will because you love me. And now, speaking of the basketball game, we're about to take a commercial break yes. here. We're going to be back. We're going to continue with this subject. We've yes. got some more, some really interesting things lined up here. Yes. And I'm going to go through my list of goals for you so you can, uh, you can hear what they are. You can comment on those, Lino. Right. So we'll be back in just a few minutes here on Revolutions Per Minute on DZRJ Radio. Hello, and we are back. Yes. I'm Eric Kane. I'm here with Lino. We're talking about... Uh, goals in your relationship. Relationship <laughs> goals before getting married. Yeah. yeah. I mean, things that you need to figure out before you take the big step. Yes. The big it's plunge. Big for for men, you know, it's a big step. So, uh, I'm going to ask you, Eric, about what are the least, you know, you're going to discuss it. Oh, the, the well, you know, that, this, is the, this is the very important stuff here. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, it's mostly about stuff about being in a relationship and being able to um, deal with certain things before you get married. Yes. Uh, being able to find, a, um, um, you know, being able to, you know, like I said before about talking, uh, being able to talk openly about your exes yes. and getting to the point where you feel comfortable. Um, you know, you can, you can actually, you know, meet up and decide what you're going to eat. Yes. It, you know, uh, you know, I used to have this big problem before was we would show up like, what do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want to eat? Well, whatever you want to eat. Well, I, you know, I would go if you, if you wanted to eat, well, I don't know. Before an hour later, we're like, oh my God, yeah, it's, it's let's, let's go to mini stop and get a piece of chicken. Um, um, but, uh, uh, um, you know, there's certain things like, for instance, if you go a day or two days yes. without seeing each other, you know, not to freak out. Um, and I, you know, and I've been in that situation before. It's like you know, wow. you know, what, she's not, she's not coming. You know, the last three days, something wrong, something wrong. You know, and I don't say joke. And you know, the worst thing is like, you know, she's like, D -d you, you don't like me anymore. No, it's just big. You know, I'm just taking the anyway. Uh, but it's it's these kind of things that you um, you get. You know, there's another one yes. that uh, I've also uh, is when. You or her goes out with her friends. Yes. Goes out with her friends. Yes, yes. And 
And at some point in the night, do you start bombarding her with texts? <laughs> Where are you? Who you with? What are they doing? Who's who's got you know? Is there, and you know, is George there? Yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, you know, it's these kind of things that um, you know. The more you're together, yes. Either these kind of things are going to get worse or better. Yes. Um, but you need to really make sure that they're better before you start getting married, uh, because once you get married. Um, and she goes out with your friends. You're like, okay, fine, go ahead. And you're okay with it. You don't yes. even think about it. You're like, oh, wow, she's out of the house. I can watch the basketball game now. <laughs> um, so uh, um, so in that respect, that's what I was just, you know, I was, I was going through a... a um, yes, yeah, so on the things that you, you, you say, it's like small things in a relationship that will mark, that will mark it after the marriage because if you can persist that kind of thing, that crazy stops, like, like you said, you were, when she's with her friends, you know, when you can't handle that kind, I, I don't think you should marry that woman. When you can't handle it emotionally, I don't think you should marry that woman. You start flipping out, like, yes. you know, which is, you know, which is, you know, and, you know there's, there's so many things, you know, the, the, there's also, you know, the big issue of physical yes. relationship. And, uh, too bad we don't have Marlon here because I'm not so comfortable <laughs> saying like Marlon would say anything. But um, um, uh, you know the sex before marriage thing, yes. which is you know it's a big issue. It's a it's, it's an issue. issue. But I mean, besides that, like just getting beyond that, being able to know that you could sleep with somebody, yes. like sleep, not you know, many physical sleep in the same bed with somebody, yes. and you can do that every single night. Yes, um, um, that don't matter. You know. Yeah, I mean that that it's. It seems like a little issue, but it's actually a pretty big issue. Yes, <laughs> actually, when you have this beautiful woman in your relationship and you, you get this chance to, to, have, to sleep with her and you realize that this woman is acrobatic in bed, you know? <laughs> you know, you know you're, you're here on one-eighth of the bed <laughs> and then she is there on seven-eighths of the bed. And is that going to be every night? Then yes. If you're going to handle that, then go on. You yeah. love, you really that, love that woman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and what's funny is, and and you know, I'm I'm old now. I've been in this this situation before, and I'm like on the very like edge of the bed. It's like it's okay, it's okay, it's okay here, it's okay fine. We'll get a bigger bed, and we get a bigger bed, and then we get a big bed, and I'm still right on the very edge of the bed, and she's like you know seven eighths of the bed, and I'm like the one eighth. But you know, and, you know, this it seems like a, a silly, stupid subject, but actually, you know, it, it, you know, these kind of things can be somewhat uh, 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 in, important. And you know, the other issue thing too is is that you you do okay. You may have opposite likes. Yes. You know, you like this, and she I likes that. She likes this. But there has to be of the two opposite likes. There has to be some things in the middle. Call there has down. to be. You cannot have. Completely different, you know. You only want to watch this on TV, and she only wants to watch this. Uh -huh. and, and 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 surprising enough, you know, I I, I had a, a girlfriend before, and she loved Desperate Housewives. Uh -huh. And and I'm like, you know, that's got to be the stupidest show ever <laughs> on television. I'm never going to watch this show. And she's like, Have you ever seen it? And I'm like, Well, no, but it's the stupidest show on television. <laughs> so she made me sit there and watch it with her. So what happens? And then of course. You know, when is, when is season four coming out? Oh, I can't wait for season four. You know, but before you know it, you may find that you may like yeah. um, a lot of things that she likes, but you gotta give it a chance. Yes. You gotta, you know, uh, um, you may, you know, your life may have been a whole different way, and her life may have been a whole different way, but now that you're together, everything, you know, you have to change. Yes. You have to mesh them together. You can't keep the, the same separate things. It just, you know, and it's possible, I'm sure there are people that make it work, but, I think you need to have some common interests. Yes, you, you, you should better search for the common ground for you to understand it. It's like um, when you have the common ground, when you can relate to your woman, you let her feel that you love her. And that's, that's the main key. Being um, relationship means to relate emotionally, spiritually, on, on her habits or whatever it is. You have to relate. You have to find a way, even if She's listening to some sorts of K-pop, Momoland, or whatever it is you have. You have to relate. You have to watch Momoland for for you to relate. So 
that's the that's your way to show that you love me. Well, you had to go. You had to go down that low. <laughs> anyway, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I know exactly what you mean. And you know, speaking of of that, I, you just remind me of something. Um, uh, you know, there's one other thing that I believe that if you're going to get married, yes, and if, if you think that is the absolute next step, is there any point in a 24-hour period where you could not hand her your phone? And let her have at it. Oh, that's so me thank you know. <laughs> that ha, you know, that's one of those things. Now, people say that you know you should let your your spouse, your person, have their own privacy, yes. have things that, of their own that are theirs that they can have it as your own. But the phone is a sticky subject. Yes, because because nowadays nowadays your phone reflects your personality. It does. Yes. Um, what you say to people. And you know that there's stuff on there that you've written about her yes. uh, to other things. And, you know, are you at the point in your relationship where you could say, here, honey, here's my phone. Here's the password. Have a look. And then she realizes it's a new phone. <laughs> <They're not laughs> kidding, exactly. Kidding, exactly. She's know? like, wow, there's nothing on your phone. I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't really write much. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, and if you if you do, you know, if you do are constantly like sending messages and having to erase them because you're worried about her seeing them, <laughs> uh, the people you're, you're you know, talking about. And here again, if, and this is a huge yes. uh, step forward, if you have friends who are girls, um, you need to go ahead and tell her about it. Yeah. And you know, if you think that you know, she's gonna get mad and never let me forget it or she's gonna use it, then you need to work through that like beforehand. Especially when that girl has this sexy name like Jimmy. Yeah, or you know, I know, <laughs> I know in the Philippines, I know people named Beauty. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, you know, th this is actually you know more important than yes. you know. It seems like a, a small thing, but this is actually one of those things where you know you tell her something, and then here again, six months later, she brings up that name again. Um, oh, well, you know, God. what about that girl? And so um, I think that you should be able to sit down and be have that openness with yes. each other that you can talk about your other relationships because everybody has, unless you're really young, yes, uh, yes. everybody's going to have other relationships and there are going to be, you know, women, but, you know, if you're together, then be able to talk about it. Yes, because that's the first thing that you need to do when you, you, you're in a relationship. You should tell all of the out, outer relationship you have because that would be a disaster if that woman caught you with texting a, a no name, you know? Yeah. That would be a disaster. And you know, every time your phone rings, do I pick it up? <laughs> should I pick, should I, you know, you walk over and that's the worst. It's like yes, your phone rings worst. and you go over and you hit the volume mm -hmm. thing to just cut off the ring. It's like, I, I, don't, I, don't, even, I don't even answer it. You know, and immediately, you're bringing suspicion into the relationship. Yes, actually, that's the, we should prevent that kind of suspicious thing, trust issue thing. You know, if you're going to be in that that someone, you should build yourself up. You should be confident in telling each of every names inside your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, um, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, the the only other thing that I was I was thinking about, and this is something that. It's just my own experience. Yes. Is to be able to have fun without going out and spending money. Yeah. So you know, she's like, uh, I need to, I need to, you know, where are we going tonight? You know, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna? It's being able to stay home yes. and do nothing yes. and still have fun. That's from my. Then you yeah. yeah. That's from my. I think that's, that's even that's even more than than taking her out on a really nice date. Is being able to. Sit home and have a, a wonderful night doing nothing. Yes, because uh, you don't have to spend money for for some sorts of movies, some sorts of eating in a restaurant, because you can enjoy all alone doing nothing. Yeah. And that's not. Yeah, and here's another thing, and this is just maybe it's just me. You know, we're back we were talking about the physical side of the relationship. Yeah. Being able to spend a night at home yes. and not do something. You know, I mean, not do any kind of thing. Not something. Like, <laughs> no, I'm being innocent. Yeah, I know. I was modeling here. She would go, you mean sex? And I'm like, yes, that's what I mean. 
being able to to stay at home, yes, be be at home and spend the evening together and not do sex or not do any kind of physical anything, yeah. just just hang out. Yeah, just hang yeah. out and tell stories and the way how your days went and then all your habits. That's romantic without having sex. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, and it may be, you know, um, um, you feel like, you know, you come over to his house, like you got it, you know, see what, you know, see if it, it's possible. And then, you know, and then you'll know that your relationship is growing. Yes. That you don't need, you don't need to go out every time. You don't need to spend money every time. You don't need to, you know, spend the night in bed, you know, or whatever. That you can just be together and you're happy with just that. It's a magic, you know. You know, that's, that's a goal. That's a goal, I think, that we all kind yes. of strive for. I'm thinking of it while you're talking and thinking about my... You know, we we can do these things without spending money, doing nothing. And doing that's nothing. Romantic. Yeah. It's romantic. Yeah. Um, so are we going to discuss the? We're going to move over to the rings, the relationship rings, <laughs> or which the, is something I know that you've been waiting for. <laughs> and this is very clever. Everybody, just hold on to your seats all right. and listen to this. This is very uh, very interesting stuff that that uh, Lingo has here. All right, so. Um, Hold your clear breath, and then I'm going to tell it to you. The even if you're single in a relationship, or if you're single, you know, if you're looking for a relationship, you should know if uh, you should know this uh, seven rings of marriages. And I know you're, you're you're thinking of yourself. How can how can I have seven rings? I have five fingers, and, you know. But I'm kidding aside. I'm going to to talk about it. So, and I'm going to. To explain it to you, and here is the first ring, engagement ring. So that's the time when you make a promise. That's engagement ring. And the second one will be the wedding ring. It's it is the time that uh, when you exchange your, your vows to each other. And then the third ring will be the discovery. So what I'm talking about a uh, few minutes before, because when you you are with with this uh, woman and you, you will discover day by day new things about her that you didn't discover before when you are in a relationship and that is discovery so how about you Eric? you have something to say about discovery well i just like the fact that you call it discovering yeah um, you know I'm it's still, amazing i still call it i still call it that thing but now so we've gone through one two three three yes. three rings the third ring is, third ring. the third ring is discovery mm -hmm. so um, the fourth one will be suffering because in every relationship, every relationship has that. Yeah. <laughs> believe me, I know. Anyway. <laughs> because in every relationship, it is reality that you will suffer. Whatever, how, how, it, it, it will not matter how, how much you love that woman, how much money you have, how much ready you have to be with that woman. You will always suffer, and that's life. Even single men can suffer. And during the relationship, you will suffer. You will experience um, a lot of problems, raising your kids, um, caring for your families. You will suffer. So that's the fourth ring. And the fifth, five, number five ring will be the persevering. <laughs> oh, you're amazing. You're amazing. I know. It's all in your eyes. It's your persevering. Ring. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because uh, a lot of many, uh, a lot of many couples end up in the fourth ring. Suffering, and then they say, "I don't want to continue. Let's divorce. Let's have a divorce." Okay? Yeah. And the and the people will will see your relationship. Be persevering. You know, you persevere because at the end of the day, being in a um, marriage li married life is not all about love. It's not all about um, roman being romantic. It's all about commitment. You know, when you when you feel that you. You feel that like you don't love that woman, you still feel that commitment that you have to. Yeah. Yes. And there's going to be times in every relationship where you don't love the other person. Yes. You yes. feel like yes. that's, that's, oh. I'm gonna throw you off the window. Um, um, <laughs> and then, but but you 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 realize like you know you know there's so many different levels of it, but you do have that that no matter what happens, yes. I you know I'm still gonna be there. Yes, and that's that's the romantic. It's very romantic when I mean, you said to your partner that I'm going to be there and going to persevere even if we are right now suffering, you know. So after that, many weeks I've discussed, you know, the, 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 the next one will be prospering. Because when you, when you uh, overcome, 
<laughs> Why are you laughing at yeah. about the rings? Pros you know? Prosper ring. Okay, prosper yes. Ring. Uh, that's, very, that's very clever. <laughs> but that's true. It's yeah. true what you're saying about that uh, prospering. Because when you, you, you overcome the, the suffering period and you persevere, for sure, you will prosper. And, and that's the main key in life. And it's, it's natural when you suffer, you will prosper when you persevere. Mm -hmm. That's the... That's the I know it marriage formula, seven rings and the last ring will be the operate. Because when you surpass all the stages of life, when you go to to our uh, engagement ring, wedding ring, discovering, suffering, persevering, prospering, and this is the last stage where you op, op this is operate. When you offer yourself as a couple to the community, to the other family, serving each other, serving many other people and that I believe will be uh, the, the goal every relationship needs to set you, you, know, you, you they need to to offer themselves as one to the community so wow that <laughs> it's almost feel like I, like okay class is finished class is, <laughs> class is finished no but uh, um, one of the things that you know while you're saying all these things I'm yeah. just sitting here thinking about uh, the ring <laughs> what, what you know what clever things I have uh, but the, um, the the suffering and and then after the after suffering and you know to bring it in perspective um, from from my point of view and I find this a lot of times when you do go through some suffering or some hardship or some incredibly bad argument or you did something that you know there are you know you do stupid things you do bad things yes. and then you do relationship ending things yes. you know these are things that are super bad um, so. You know, if you can get past these things, I think, you know, your relationship is at a certain level. And when you get past the huge hurdles, yes. and there's a friend of mine that I know that went through this with, he got married, and they got married rather young. And uh, at one point, they just didn't like each other. They didn't like each other. And they were like, we should, we should, I guess we just get a divorce. And they're like, well, let's go to some counseling. And I said, <laughs> so they went to some counseling, whatever, and they went through the whole thing. And then after a while, they're like, you know, they had these huge, you know, you know blast arguments, and, you know, these relationship ending fights. Oh my God. And then, you know, after a while, once they made it through all this, then it was almost like there was no reason to argue anymore. They found out that they were in like absolute head over heels in love with each other. Wow. And so now we're, now move ahead 35 years. And, wow, and they are married still. Yeah. And they are, you know, they do everything together. They, and they, he talks about it with me some, you know, sometimes about that time where they were going through such a difficult period yes. and they were both suffering and they both hate each other. And they both didn't want to be together. And they found a pathway because of that, yes. because of all the suffering they went through together, they found a, a, a way to, you know, bring it together. And now they are probably the closest couple I know. It's a very good story, Eric. I, I, uh, I really believe that uh, all of the relationship will suffer. And the way you handle suffering is the main key to stay in love. Because without suffering, you just like, just be like automatic, you know. You, like you enhance bad your life, and that's nothing. There's nothing more. Because when, when you suffer, it's a blessing. It's a blessing when you persevere to that suffering, and then you discover that that's the purpose of marriage, to serve one another during the hard times, to stay with one another during those life blows you will experience, and still at the end of the day you will become one, still one with each other. Yeah, and then that's you know, there's, there's always this saying, and here again, I, you know, I hate using this this word, but um, the worse the argument, the better the sex, um, because it's true. You know, when you have really bad arguments in in my past uh, relationship, wow. you have a really bad argument. A lot of times. The next day, you're you're the most love you've ever been. Like the worse the argument is, the better the things are. You know, the next day because you've made it. It's like you feel like okay, we ran the marathon. Okay, now we can go and, and you know be together and, and relax because we made it past. Yes. You know, made it past yeah, this right. thing. And, and and you know, and there are things that you know every relationship is going to kind of come through, and you need to set these things, these goals up. I think beforehand. Especially because, let's say that you have the big thing, the big, yes. argue, the relationship ending argument, the, he slept with another woman and I caught him. 
that kind of argument. Yes. I mean, that is, that's you know, one of the pinnacle arguments. Yes. Can you get through this? Can we, you know, are we the type of, are we the couple that can find a way through this? And sometimes finding a way through a huge issue like that yes. or, you know, something to do with, you know, money or, or you know, uh, um, um, this, that you can get through that and that will solidify your relationship for the rest of your life. Yes. Um, and you know, and, and here again, it's like, well, you know, you'll have the argument. I can never trust you. And you know, a couple of days later, you know, after you've talked it through and after you've figured it out, um, and you work through it, you will find that you know what? Okay, you did this, and then you know, I did this, and we argued about that, and now it's start all over. Again. Let's start all over. Let's you know, let's start it again. Yes. And you know, maybe it'll be better next. Maybe you know, it'll just get better. And. You know, we all go through this. Every relationship that I know of, all, yes. every friend that I know of, has had that one big one yes. that they've had to get over. And either you get over it or you don't. And a lot of times, if you can just get past it, yes. then you'll be surprised at what happens next. Yes. Wow, that's uh, beautiful insights. That's my friend Eric again talking to you. <laughs> so it's a beautiful thing that uh, you 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 stated the story because all this relationship can have that hardship but still how you manage that hardships in life will dictate how much you love each other I, you know, I, you, I, you, I, I, I guess what it shows is I've done a lot of really stupid things <laughs> <laughs> and I've had to get my you know, I've had to like you know uh, um, apologize quite a bit for um, but um, um, but yeah I mean I think you know here to just kind of um, um, wrap things up that um, um, Having goals in your relationship and sitting down yes. and discussing those goals and talking about them and where we can go five years from now and yes. where we're going to be and what our life is going to be like, I think it's worth doing. And I think, you know, sitting down and going through the rings. Yes. Um, the um, seven rings. The seven rings, it, it's, um, um, you know, that stuff, it, it, you know, it's very clever play on words, but it actually does mean something. It's yes. very, very meaningful and very insightful. So. I know Eric will remember those rings. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I got to get past the first ring first. You know that's that's the, that's a tricky thing. But I, you know, um, um, I'm hoping that uh, uh, everybody out there listening today, yes. especially if you're in a relationship or you're you know you're thinking about taking the next step, that you have a chance to think about your goals and the things that maybe we've talked about today, and that hopefully that uh, um, will give you a little bit uh, uh, of insight into. Um, uh, what your what your you know progression is going to be in your life with your person, and then hopefully it will make things a little better. Yes. So, for revolutions per minute, I'm Eric McKay. Marlon Craig is not here, but she'll be here here <laughs> back here next week. We are just so happy that we had Lino here uh, talking with us. Some very interesting things today. I think seven rings. The seven <laughs> rings. I'm not going to forget the seven rings anytime soon. Uh, but we will be here again. Next Saturday, yes, at uh, the same time, one o'clock, uh, with more insightful things here on on uh, Revolution for a Minute to hopefully enhance your lives. Yes. So for Eric McCain and Lena, we're going to uh, uh, we're going to sign off now. And stay tuned for the next show. Not necessarily the news. Yes. Bye bye.